Well, welcome, welcome, guys. Like, I want to welcome all of you if you are new to the channel or new to kind of what we're doing here. So I'm going to start try to start back up these uh, live chats. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk about backpacking, talk about hiking stuff, gear, of course, um, but just topics, whatever we have, uh, I have planned for, I guess, the show in mind, as well as answer questions and kind of frame our discussion around that. So feel free to Jump in the chat if you're watching the replay or if you're listening to it in your car as a podcast, which I know some people um, try to do. Um, just let me know um, any questions you have in the live chat and we'll kind of discuss them. So I already see a bunch of you are already in there talking about some different things um, and we'll get into that. But first of all, I know the big question you're talking about, you've seen the, the title and I'm talking about AT through hiking now. I don't mean... Me, I'm just talking about people you're watching. I know Frozen from Outdoor Adventures has gotten started. And one thing I want to say is, do you realize how happy that guy looks? Jason looks like he's really enjoying himself on the AT. And I'm I'm really happy for him. I think he just looks like a completely different person. Not that he looked awful before, but now he just seems like he is, I don't know, at peace or just really enjoying himself. So... He's one of those guys I'm really excited to see how he does and how he progresses and just following his story, like I always have in following his channel. I'm also following Ron OG Outdoors, who's a really small channel, but I met him at the Ohio um, Backpacker Meetup, and I just kind of wanted to continue his story, and he has a really powerful one. So if you haven't checked him out, feel free to, to search him. I shared him before in the community tab, those of you guys who are interested. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you're aware I'm watching him. On the PCT, I'm sure those of you guys who have followed the PCTers have been following, I think his name is Second Second Chance Hiker, um, and his goal when he's been out there is to pretty much lose 200 pounds, and he's just uh, walking, taking it easy, and I'm able to catch a few of his, um, but he just has a really solid attitude, and he's just one of those guys that you, you want to follow, you want to root for, and of course you want to know how the story progresses or how it ends um, and, and hopefully it means with him getting to, to Canada. I'm not sure, I haven't watched enough of him to know what his overall goal is besides the losing weight, but he's been really fantastic um, to watch. He's just one of those guys that, that I, I don't know, you, like I said, you want to root for. So going back to the topic at hand, um, so AT through hiking, and I know I've been asked multiple times about myself going on through hike. And to be honest, I've thought about making a video about it. Uh, maybe I will at some point, but I'll, I guess I'll give you guys a sneak preview. Not as many people watch um, the live chats as they do the um, the videos. But I, you know, I, I doubt I'll ever go on a through hike until way in the future. You're talking about my kids are are young. I know those of you guys who are new to the channel may be surprised by that, but they're young enough that I feel like I would be missing too much, um, and I don't want to do that. And it's one of those things where I struggle sometimes even with, uh, you know, longer, well, sorry, shorter through hikes, like even considering the John Muir Trail. Um, and I, I feel like the the sweets, the longest I feel comfortable going or leaving them is probably up to two weeks is probably what I want to um, do or even think about. And so it's something to consider when you have a young family is I, every time I plan something that's even a little longer, I feel super guilty because it it's such a selfish act and when you when you become uh, a parent you you become a little bit less selfish or you realize exactly how selfish you were prior to becoming a parent and that's one of those things where uh, a through hike would be just for me um, and granted I understand you know people talk about you know self-improvement and and going to the trail for themselves um, but that's one of those things that I, I really have a hard time uh, wrapping my mind around for me um, how I could do that being a family person and you know I, I had kids I have kids right now and I have a responsibility as well to uh, to watch them grow up and and be here for them so that's that's something I really struggle with and um, I guess we can talk about it I'll go ahead and have a look at the the chat of course um, this kind of fits into what we were talking about but someone wanted to Joseph is talking about, could you take a couple minutes, please, and talk about including kids on camping and backpacking adventures? And Joseph, to be honest, I haven't taken my kids out on a backpacking trip. Um, they are ages um, range from, I think I mentioned before, kindergarten through third grade, and I have three of them. And so it's something where I've done more base camping. 
And so, uh, you know, camping in the campground, but going out for day hikes. I've done uh, a little bit of that as well as just camping um, out, at a, you know, once again in a campground or someplace where it's fairly close, you could consider it a front country uh, camping or a car camping. I think it's important to do that. Uh, I think it's really important to, for, for me at least, to build small. I know there's some people out there who will take their kids from when they were super little out in the back country and more power to people who do that, but that's, that's definitely not for me and not for them. I, I don't want to scare them off of it. Um, I didn't come from a family where uh, hiking or backpacking was something that was commonplace, so I want to make sure that I, I do this the right way. And so far, they're always interested in going out with me. They're always interested in going camping. So I feel like so far I'm, I'm doing right. I just have to play it by ear and make sure they don't carry um, heavy weights. But um, I think that's the best way to start, uh, Joseph, is front country stuff, um, camping just alone. And then I'm hoping this year or next year to do, do a true backpacking trip. Now, one of the things you want to consider when you're talking about backpacking um, with kids is they actually recommend 10 to 15 percent of their body weight is what they should be carrying. And so for me, that means that I will be carrying most of their stuff, which means I'll probably be carrying a heavier pack, uh, which is fine. Um, just as long as they're able to carry some basic things like maybe some. some so if you're talking about my let's talk about my eight year old, for example, she's uh, about 50 pounds, I think. I see, I don't know exactly, 50 to 60 pounds. And so to me, that means five to six pounds is what she's probably going to be carrying, uh, which is probably like a foam pad, um, a Costco quilt, a uh, backpack, and maybe some water and food. And so there's some things to consider when you think about um, backpacking with, uh, with kids. Just in general, I think it's important to consider how much weight uh, they are carrying. Uh, go adventure. I don't know what this is, but it seems cool. <laughs> oh, well. And so one thing I'm going to try to do, I think I mentioned before, is make this the first Thursday of every month. And we're going to have this live chat. Uh, I kind of got on it for a little while just because I had some technical issues. Of course, let me know in the chat if we're having any technical issues uh, at some different points. It sounded like it was a, it was like a Japanese Godzilla movie, you know, where you're talking like this and then the, the voice is way delayed. So let me know if it ever gets to that point. Um, have I been out yet this year? Yes, barely. In January, I went out to Oil Creek um, State Park, and that's a fun one to, to go to. And I, I, I probably will make that a, a yearly trip. Kevin Yerby is saying, I'm thinking about going frameless, but afraid to pull the trigger. Any advice? And I would say... Uh, the key thing is to remember what your overall pack weight is. And so if you're, let's say, you know, base weight of, uh, I'm going to say 15 pounds or less, if you're somewhere in that area and you're thinking about going frameless, I say go ahead and go for it. Um, you, you may have to dial down your uh, overall weight a little bit, some, you know, a little bit more um, to get super comfortable. Um, but once you're at that level, if you, now if you're talking about you have a base weight of of 20 plus pounds now that it's impossible but it becomes more difficult uh fitting in into kind of the weight ranges of frameless packs but i'd say uh pare down your your overall list kind of get things dialed in and then also another big thing is to to practice and think about how you're going to pack that stuff uh, because it is really different when you have a frameless pack because you're kind of making your frame with your stuff in your pack, if that makes sense. And so you want to make sure that you don't have um, things jutting you in the back or uh, things completely unbalanced because it will be magnified if you have a frameless pack. And so that's something to consider when you're thinking about going frameless. But go ahead and, and uh, pull the trigger, man. Uh, going back to some questions, lots of people in the chat, the chat's hopping. Thanks for making it a fun place, um, to be, uh, I have new respect for you. Oh, thanks. Budget bushcraft. Yeah. I, I talked briefly about that, but I think it's, it's super important. And, and I feel like I'm, I'm out enough already anyway, going back to talking about backpacking with kids, um, that my kids ask me every time, dad, can we, can we go with you? And there's some trips I just say, no, you can't, can't come with me on this one, be it the mileage or whatever we're, we're doing or seeing. And so I think, uh, I guess I've already, I already said what I said, had to say about being a parent. Uh, 
<laughs> Rebecca says, my room is so clean. Well, this is a spare room, so it doesn't get used an awful lot. You kind of see behind me that's typically where I film is in that section right there. And so I try to make sure it's clean. Um, of course, it's just one of those organizational things. Uh, Go Adventures asking if I wear ultras, and I do not wear ultras for the, the reason that you're mentioning in a second um, statement that you're making is you're asking about easing into zero drop. I heard you could cause injury if you're not used to it, and I know that is the case. Unfortunately, um, secondhand through Subaru Josh, who is one of my friends who hikes, and he he made the, the mistake of kind of not easing into it. Let me rephrase. There are some people who don't have an adjustment period at all with ultras, and they love them, and they transition into them fairly easy, I mean, rel relatively easily without missing a beat. Then there are those like my friend Josh who just went right into it and had um, pretty much developed Achilles uh, tendonitis, and he's talked about it before, so it's not a huge secret. Uh, but he really hurt himself, uh, and he, we were on actually a, a fairly easy trail. We were in Michigan doing the Pitcher Rocks Trail. An absolutely beautiful trail. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to do that. But it's one of those things where he didn't ease himself into it. And, and I've talked before about how I feel like we've been walking with a, a fairly significant heel drop for most of our lives. And to go to a zero drop, even though some people say it's it's comfortable, and I, I'll believe you know their experience, for me, it's just not worth the risk. But yeah, easing into it makes the best sense. If you look at Ultra's website, they actually have, excuse me, they actually have a page or a resource talking about their zero drop and how to transition into it. I don't think they have detailed specifics, um, but they just warn you that that's a necessity. Hey, Bob. Uh, James is asking, would you recommend the Maroon Bells to someone who has never hiked at that altitude? Yes, I believe that you can do it. Um, prior to me doing the Maroon Bells, I had never hiked at that altitude. Um, just remember to take it easy. Listen to your body is one of the big things I think is is one of the big things to remember is that if you're out east and you're pushing and you're pushing and you get your heart rate up, it's not a huge deal. You can recover relatively easily. Out west or at altitudes for me, above 10,000 feet is where you just can't do that. Um, walking around will get your heart rate up and you have to try to make sure you keep your heart rate under control. For me, what I actually had at that time, I had was wearing my Fitbit a lot more. You actually don't see it. Now I just kind of got out to using, I'm trying to get in the habit myself without having to look at a Fitbit. But the Fitbit for me, it had a little heart rate monitor. It's not the most accurate of things, um, but I just kind of glanced at it and, and um, saw what my heart rate was. If it started to get elevated, I made sure that I um, did not um, keep it up that high. Uh, lots of snow, yes, in Michigan. Thankfully, we don't have much snow here in Ohio. Maybe a dusting. Um, Dollar Blazing is asking, any chance you'll make it to Arizona? And I came close this year. <laughs> Actually, uh, a friend who was gonna uh, met through YouTube was gonna uh, go out to Arizona, and they did go out to Arizona this um, this past February. And I was toying with the idea. I just haven't made it out um, as yet. And so some other things I said I was going to mention and talk about, uh, the Thermares Uber Light. Um, that's one of those things I'm definitely going to try to make sure I, I pick up this year. Just to test it out, I've seen a few uh, kind of overviews or initial reviews of it. I know uh, Motivated by Mountains, who follows the channel, um, and those of you guys may know him, um, has put out a review. I haven't watched that one as yet. I know Bigfoot put out just kind of an overview, and it, it intrigues me. It intrigues me for a summer pad. I believe the R value is only uh, 2.0, which I think is probably just enough for me for summer because I am a cold sleeper. Um, but the, you know, pads have surprised me before. I expect it to to hold it better than um, the Big Agnes AXL Air uninsulated that I tried, and so I, I think it will do um, a better better job than than other ones. Uh, Go Adventure says, I'm a Wisconsin guy, so I've done Pitcher to Rocks. Yeah, Pitcher to Rocks is fantastic. Uh, Eli says he loves his ultra lone peaks. They don't work in the heavy snow. Budget Bushcraft says, there are 52 people watching, and I'm the first like, yes. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click the like button if you like what we're talking about. And uh, it just helps channel and just helps videos become a little more visible. 
Aaron Fisher, hi Tim. Do you know any backpackers who have knee problems? If so, how do you deal with it? And the answer to that question is yes. Occasionally, I actually have uh, knee problems. Um, it started, I think, uh, I, I've kind of pinned it down. It just depends where, where, for example, in your knee, the pain actually is. But for me, I have more difficulty going downhill, uh, that jarring impact of going downhill super quickly. Um, and just as I get up there in age, I guess, um, I'm, I'm not 40 yet. I'm, I'm 35 right now. Um, but every year I can tell things are a little bit more different, uh, especially when going downhill. And so what I do is in terms of, of treatment is uh, tracking poles is a big must for me. Um, and the other big thing I've seen people use, and I don't have to use this because of the technique I, I have started using, um, is you can actually find knee bands. Um, there's some cheap ones on Amazon that I actually came close to purchasing because I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm getting knee pain and I have to go up and down these hills or this is what I really enjoy doing. Uh, it's going to be a major issue for, for me. What I end up doing is you have to work on your technique personally of going downhill. And so pretty much when I'm going downhill, this sounds kind of silly, is my knees are constantly bent. They're not straight and, and jarring down every time. There's some techniques um, to this. If you go to YouTube right now, actually, and um, if you search knee problems backpacking or going downhill backpacking, um, there'll be techniques that show you you can either, what, what I t tend to do is I bend my knees while I go down and you're almost crouched. And so it's not as much impact. And every time I do that downhill, and you may have to go a little slower. Every time I go downhill now, I even on short trips, I make sure I do that. And the knee problem for me has uh, disappeared, which is great. Uh, the trail that I did in Utah, uh, Kevin, was the, it's the High Uintas. Uh, we did a portion of the Highline Trail, but we were mainly in the Rock Creek uh, Basin. Uh, hey... So dollar blazing, how heavy is my first aid kit? I want to say it's only a couple ounces. Um, I do have a lighter pack. I'll be sharing actually in an upcoming video. Um, this Monday is is just an overall lighter pack list so people can look at. I've been asked multiple times and I haven't really done a good job of putting that lighter pack link out there of all my gear. So I try to make sure I, I put together what I call a beginner backpacking list. And so you'll see that video here on Monday. Um, and it does a, I think it does a nice, it took me a long, long time, honestly, to put together that list, um, just because I tried to balance value, um, with cost, because I understand that not everyone wants to buy a, um, let's say a, a Thermores X light. I totally get it. Or an X Therm. You're talking a couple hundred dollars for a sleeping pad. Whereas they'd be more amenable to something that I recommend, which is the climate insulated version, uh, static V. And so you'll see when you look at that list on Monday that there are definitely some compromises that I made, but I tried to maintain that balance. And so the entire thing is full of compromises, um, but I hope for a beginner it'll be a, a helpful uh, resource. Yes, I am 35 years old. Um, Hey Jessica, I am really glad to help your uh, your husband's uh, gear addiction. <laughs> uh, questions about welcome everyone to the chat. Uh, Solomon Ultras, yes, I do recommend Solomon Ultras as well. That's my winter boot um, that I use. I use the Solomon Speed Cross Fours right now, um, but that is what I'm using. Okay, Greg is asking a question about hammocks, and he's he's asking uh, he's considering going hammock. <laughs> Once you go hammock, you don't go back. Well, typically, uh, can you get into specific brands of hammocks, tarp sizes, straps, quilts that are more on the ultralight side? Plus, ways to find deals at this time of the year. Greg, first of all, talking about deals this time of the year, this is a hard time to find deals. Uh, I feel like the biggest sales that you tend to see is Warbonnet, for example. Um, I think they have a Labor Day sale, but the big deals are Black Friday. And a, a lot of the cottage vendors especially will um, will put their, their huge sales and wait till then. And so specific brands of hammocks that I recommend, I've mentioned before, uh, the Dream Hammock Darien, 
You guys have all heard me talk about. That's my hands down my favorite hammock. I own it. Uh, if you want to go something without a net, the Dream Hammock Freebird. Um, solid hammocks as well uh, from Warbonnet, Warbonnet Blackbird, as well as I don't personally own one, but Dutchware hammocks have gotten po really positive reviews. Tarp sizes, I think uh, something like the Warbonnet Thunderfly is the perfect size of tarp or um, the UGQ uh, 11 foot wide body tarp. Straps, I would just do regular tree straps. Um, you can get those there a dime a dozen. Quilts, I prefer enlightened equipment quilts, but hammock gear makes some fantastic quilts, no issues there. Um, if you wanna go something mass produced, I think the Mass Drop Pine Down blan Blanket is a fantastic quilt slash blanket for only $100, and to me, you can get down to about 30 degrees, and I'm a, I'm a cold sleeper. Um, other quilt manufacturers, UGQ is an, another positive one as well. Uh, I think Cedar Ridge Outdoors or Outfitters is a, is a popular one too. So that was a pretty quick rundown of a setup. Um, I want to make sure that I hit all those there. There we go. Tim mentioned uh, downhill hurts more, and that knee brace I was talking about knee pain is the Chopat knee brace. That's one that came up really, really uh, commonly when I was researching, when I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I hurt my knee. I'm never going to backpack again. And so that's something I, I want to make sure you guys know. It's on Amazon. If you type in Chopat knee braces, it'll come up. Oh, I actually did want to talk about backpack, bike packing. Uh, let's see. Are they? Okay. The question is, are there any more bike pack in the future? And yes, um, I have been talking about bikes so much recently, uh, thinking about bikes and bike packing. And I definitely continue to go on one bike packing trip a year that the channel is, you know, it's definitely just general outdoor stuff, but it's definitely oriented around uh, backpacking. But bike packing does fit nicely in there. Uh, I'm not the best cyclist. Um, but I do continue to use and ride uh, the Salsa Journeyman. And there is a bike packing slash more touring style trip coming up in the future um, this summer. And it will be kind of gravel as well as some bike trails. And so it'll be a, a really fun one. So it is definitely coming up. Uh, Chris is asking, am I still using a sleeping pad in a hammock versus an underquilt? And the answer is yes. I do own an underquilt. It's a summer underquilt. It's a Hammock Gear Phoenix 40. Um, is what I think it is. Uh, 40 Econ. And, but I typically will use a pad. Hey, Restless. Uh, Marlo is talking about the Dream Hammock Freebird. I remember mentioning Dream Hammock before. Um, and I always recommend the Freebird. And that's why, you know, I, I got, of course, some heat on my last video where I say stop buying cheap hammocks, those of you guys may remember that, is because of, of products like the Dream Hammock Freebird. $40 for a cottage-made hammock or something that's ready to ship, and you get it uh, fairly quickly. Andy, yes, on Monday, that gear list will be available to all subscribers. It will be in that video on Monday, I promise. Uh, so you'll see that recommended more beginner list. I'm trying to, to find a sweet spot. You know, Let's say if someone wanted to buy all their stuff uh, at one time, here's what I would recommend. So you'll see that list on Monday. Uh, why doesn't Hennessy get any love? I think it doesn't because they've just become more more mass produced than, you know, it's it's nice getting your custom made hammock. Um, let's see, questions. Other than the need for two trees to hang, what is the biggest negative of hammock camping? I would have to say, honestly, the biggest negative for me is um, when it's raining a lot and the ground is really dirty, uh, everything is not self-contained. So I, I do notice a big difference if I've gone, when I've gone tent camping and it's raining outside, you can pack all your stuff away in your tent, everything's self-contained, and you can have your backpack in there, you can have everything else in there, stuff it in, and then leave your tent for last and leave it on the outside of your pack. When it comes to hammock camping, you're kind of constantly getting a little wet or drizzled on. Um, it's not a huge deal. I don't have an, a major issue with it, but it's something that to, you do have to consider where uh, the ground is dirty, you have to get out and you know get your hammock strung down first. You leave the tarp up, of course, last, um, but you still get more wet than you will in a tent. 
Uh, let's see. Corey is saying he spent five hundred dollars in, in bike packing gear. Uh, yes, there's a lot of. So you think uh, backpacking gear is is crazy expensive? Bike packing gear is uh, a lot more expensive in some area, in some ways. Depends what you get. Oh, did I ever decide in the tarp tent that I'm using? Um, not as yet. I'm just waiting to see what they release. Okay, some more things we want to talk about. Uh, so I mentioned in the title before that new headlamp that I'm checking out um, will actually make it onto that new um, backpacking gear list. And it is the Black Diamond Spotlight 160. You guys knew I was looking for a headlamp at some point, just trying to see exactly what was out there. I did uh, pick up a Nightcore NU25, not only to test, but to have another rechargeable headlamp. I saw the Black Diamond Spotlight 160, and I thought to myself, that doesn't seem like a bad deal. It was $26. It's something where I went ahead and picked it up, $26, and it was enough that I, I just wanted to test it. And I'm, so far, I've been really impressed. It's a nice uh, balance. It's not super expensive, but it's not um, a cheap headlamp by any means. Uh, and, oh yeah, backpacking internationally. <laughs> I, I do have the opportunity one, one thing i guess I'll, I'll i'll spill the beans on uh this video somewhere in here i mean how many people are going to be watching it 30 minutes in um but the big thing that I, I was planning on doing is i actually had a permit uh booked this year for the john muir trail i was gonna finally go ahead and and do it the permit was booked. I was starting to look at uh, shuttles and plane tickets and all that sort of stuff. I was going to go northbound. I had my date set and everything. And then the opportunity came for me to do um, to do something where I, I get to go home, hopefully this summer. Um, and um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to tell you exactly um, when, uh, but I get to go back to Barbados. And I haven't been there in... I don't know, it's been almost uh, eight years now. And so I had to take the opportunity and put the John Muir Trail once again on hold. And I'm able to go back home. And I'm hoping to see it from a different perspective. And I'll, I'll bring you guys along on some parts of it, um, especially when we do some hiking around the, uh, the island. That will be a lot of fun. Um, it's just something where I, I'm hoping to do some camping. Backpacking culture is not huge there um, just because the island is, is fairly small. Um, but it's something where I want to definitely go out and do some hiking. If I can do an overnight, uh, because it, there's not a whole lot of public land like there is here. You can do camping. The camping culture isn't very big there at all, um, which is why I didn't grow up camping. Um, but I think it'd be fantastic to do some, some day hikes and show you guys, uh, exactly what is out there and kind of where I came from. Um, yeah, so I, the JMT is going to be put on hold. Um, it was unfortunate, but I, I think I, I hopefully made, you know, I made the right decision. I wanted to go home and, um, and go back. So backpacking internationally probably not uh, this year but hiking internationally i will be able to say that I, i've done it's so funny when i i grew up there i did zero hiking i did nothing out there i didn't even know there was such a thing as hiking i didn't know why people would walk from one distance to <laughs> to another and when you see um the video that i released of hiking uh, where i grew up you'll wonder to myself you'll wonder why i never did it because it's it's going to be awesome i'm really looking forward to it and yes, that glorious mustache is uh, Barbadian. I'm not a Barbadian by birth, um, but I, that's where I grew up. Uh, let's see. Karma is talking about, are you going to the JMT this year? Yeah, I'm super excited for you. That That is one of those things where I've I've always wanted to do it, and I con it continues to, to be on the list, honestly. Uh, Dolly Saws this year uh, is the question, and the answer is yes, probably this year. Uh, we have some... Um, plans maybe but there, there are always lots of tentative plans uh, but nothing set in stone um, as yet oh yeah yeah have have fun on, on the john Muir trail in, in terms of how this all came together quickly uh this year for me um is i i watched mile mile and a half for what must have been the i don't know 
60th time it felt like and I came home and I was you know this is how I remember I mentioned in the last video how I have a, a great wife and I came home and I said to my I just sighed and I said well someday I'll do that and she said why not this year and I kind of was taken aback. I said are you, are you serious and that's how it all kicked off really really quickly um but you know I'll put it off for another year and like I said before that's one of the things I, ha I have with uh one of my downsides I think about through hiking or going to long trips is my uh, my kids. No, I probably won't see kayak. <laughs> uh, now I'm still in Trill in Indiana. Uh, Indiana there really is I know some people have gone to the Charles uh, Dean Wilderness in Indiana. I've seen some of that as well as I know there's some longer trails. I know Jason Wish has done as well as Chris, that hiking guy, um, has done. I, I typically... Sorry to don't have a whole lot of interest in hiking in Indiana. I feel it would be very familiar as hiking in uh, in Ohio. Typically when I go backpack, and I know those of you guys who follow the channel um, are aware of this, but I try to go within an eight-hour radius, maybe a little further, eight-hour radius of uh, my current location, which is in, the, in northern Ohio. And so that's why you see a lot of times Red River Gorge or Dolly Sods and further south like the Smokies or further north like Michigan. So we're we're perfectly positioned is why I tell people to hit a lot of awesome places quickly. And I try to make sure that um, I feel like you, you, I want good bang for my buck when it comes to drive time versus hike time. And so if I leave fairly early in the morning, I want to be able to get to the trailhead um, fairly quickly um, so that I have time of the day, the first day, to continue to go hiking until dinner time or night time and then set up camp for that first night uh <laughs> ed urban's asking what is my dream hike if i had no kids if i had no kids um well no family whatsoever in terms of immediate family so that means no wife no kids i probably would um hike internationally someplace like um uh, Peru or Chile or just one of those countries out there which, in South America, which I think would be kind of cool to to hit up and do. If you're talking about the United States, um, probably the John Muir Trail is still my dream hike, even if I didn't have any kids. Nick is saying hi from Cincinnati. You are very welcome for the videos and reviews. Enjoy Augsburg Ridge and Hanson's Point. Those are two of my favorite spots uh, in the gorge. Um, Augsburg Ridge is I talk about good bang for your buck hike. That Augsburg Ridge is by far to me one of the, the best bank for your buck hikes in the gorge. And Hanson's Point is great. If now it's getting a little crowded, um, and unfortunately people are leaving toilet paper all over the place, which is disappointing. Royce is asking if there's any interest in doing Isle Royale. And yes, there's always interest. Going back to the idea of drive time, um, that's exactly what it is. It's using the time to drive out to Isle Royale and getting the ferry and the time spent doing that uh, is a this kind of dissuades me from going um i think we're going to be finishing up here we have about 30 minutes that we're going we kind of covered all the topics um, that i had we're going to try to make sure that we do i do this like i said every first thursday i'm going to try to make sure that that happens um, those of you guys who have asked before about helping the channel out one of the ways you can do that, and I can help you out as well, is Mountain House Meals. Um, they have a new one. Remember Mountain House Fusilli? They didn't sponsor this video or anything, by the way. They're just um, part of their ambassador program. The code is always in the description. Um, be sure to check out their new meal, the Mountain House Pasta, which is the Pasta Fusilli, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of has, I think it's sausage in there as well as just that curly pasta, not like a, well, it kind of reminds me of rotini, um, but pasta fusilli. That is the newest meal. See you later, Karma. And unless there are any other questions, hello from Columbus, Spencer. Um, we'll try to make sure that we do this once a month and I get back into the habit of doing it. That was the hard part is once you get out of the habit of doing a live stream, I think it's hard to kind of kick it back off. But yeah, that's it. Thanks always for watching, guys. I think I covered everything. Hopefully you found it helpful or a good resource. Be sure to watch the video dropping Monday where I talk about backpacking uh, gear. 
kind of targeted at beginners, but someone who is getting into backpacking and doesn't want to blow the budget, but also wants quality gear. This is an in-between type of video for people who um, enjoy that sort of thing. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.